it on here, bro. Okay. Yeah, put your feet where water is. Okay. We renew your baptismal promises in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. The heavens were opened and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son. Listen to it. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him, and he saw the Holy Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him, and a voice from the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Usually when Mass begins, we have the intentions being offered of that particular Mass, which the lector did, of course. And then we pause for a moment and add our own intentions. Um, today, my special intention is the healing of my, my niece, Kimberly, who's still undergoing recovery and procedures. And as I was coming here, a woman, she was really a girl when I taught her in a grammar school, she was seventh grade, uh, Kathy, Kathy's name is, asked me to pray for her granddaughter. So she's obviously old enough to have a granddaughter, Adelaine. And of course, we pray for Oscar's son, uh, Yuan, as he recovers. And the list goes on and on. And my list is usually on the altar with me. So I, I look all the names over as um, uh, beginning Mass. It's a response that we have, all of us praying to God, it's a response that we have to God himself when he intervened in creation and his son was being baptized by John in the Jordan River and his voice is heard. I don't know how many heard his voice, I don't know who heard his voice, but obviously his voice was heard by at least those around Jesus being baptized. As we pray to Jesus, we realize that we are the children of God. We are the adopted sons and daughters of God. So when we pray for our own intentions, we're doing what Jesus did. We're, we're stepping into the promised baptismal waters. That wasn't the baptism that John gave was not a baptism of ours. Okay, it was a preparation, it was a baptism of forgiveness. Our baptism is a baptism of incorporation into the body of Christ. So as Jesus is being baptized, our renewal comes forward because it reminds us that we are the adopted sons and daughters of God the Father. And as we say our prayers, we're connecting uh, I'll use my hands as a physical example, but we're connecting God with earth. We're connecting God with Jesus at the baptismal Jordan experience. And it reminds us that we are God's children. We, as well as our families and friends and those for whom we pray, are God's children, just like Jesus was God's child. And what did Jesus look like? We have no idea. There's so many different versions of him artistically through the year, years. But if you want to see what Jesus looks like, look to your right and look to your left. And those of you sitting alone, don't look, look behind you. Because Jesus has come to us, and we learn this through the theology, especially of St. Paul, that he reminds us that we're all members of the body of Christ. So as members of the body of Christ, our Father is God the Father. And when we pray for one person, we're doing exactly what Jesus did with his life. 
he offered all of his intentions to God the Father, whether it was prior to his miracles, whether it was be, as he walked on water, it didn't matter whether he went into the mountain to pray or prayed the Beatitudes in public. He always prayed with the idea of all prayer going to God the Father. That's nice to hear about Jesus, but you and I are in the same position. Any prayer we pray goes to God the Father, the Creator. When Jesus was being baptized, the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. I don't know if there was really a bird, but the dove has become a symbol for us of the Holy Spirit. We, we can't grasp what God looks like. We certainly can't grasp what the Holy Spirit looks like. Jesus, we have a little bit of an interpretation issue. So the scripture writer said, it descended, the Spirit of God descended like a dove. So peacefully, coming over the bridge just a few seconds ago, right alongside the car was a pelican, a huge, big black pelican. And I, I noticed it, funny, it was almost like a company in our car. That could have been very easily what it looked like, not a pelican, but a dove descending over Jesus. But the Spirit, the author says, descended like a dove, peacefully, the Spirit of God descended upon Jesus. And the connection right there, the Trinitarian connection between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit becomes evident here in, in the early sections of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3. We have the beginning of our open-mindedness to the Trinity, God as Father, Son, and Spirit. And in that moment, there are three stops, three persons that we're naming, but it's God. God the Father, Son, the Spirit, one God. So because we're members of the body of Christ, when we speak to God, it's the Holy Spirit that's inspiring us to speak to God, our Father. We might say, oh, it's my intention because I want to pray for this person. Now, well, that's, that's all well and good as, as in our humanity. But today when I prayed for Kim, when I prayed for Adeline, it was God who inspired me. And, and this is no miraculous event. It happens to all of us because we are God's children. And the Spirit fills us to respond to God the Father. And theologically, we, we know all prayer is imitation of Jesus through the Holy Spirit to God the Father. So our prayer is always Trinitarian, even if we don't consciously realize that. When Jesus was in the water, God broke through creation and allowed everyone who could hear to hear who this is being baptized. And it was Jesus, his son. And it's funny because when, when we went to the Holy Land two years ago and a few years before that, everybody had the opportunity to go to the Jordan River. And there were, there were steps and many, 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 many Christian groups around the banks of the river. And there were steps in which you can go stand somewhat into the water, not into the, the, the dirt itself, but the steps keep you in the water, but a above and safe. So each person comes down in our group and they, they, they can, oh, you're going to rebaptize us? No, I'm going to bless you with the water of the Jordan in remembrance of our baptism. There's only one baptism. We only get baptized once. You can get blessed as many times as you want with holy water, but we only get baptized once because that's our introduction into the body of Christ. So as each person came down, I sprinkled them with the water. And the water, you know, you, you're like, this is, this is the Jordan River. This should be beautiful water. It's murky. You can't, you can't see the bottom. You can't even see your foot if you put it down. It's not clear. It's the Jordan, you know. It's, it's on its way to the um, Sea of Galilee. But that section of it that we, we used, and this is the section where John was near Bethany with Jesus and the followers, is, is murky. And I thought... 
It would have been nice if it was like clean and sparkly, like a pool of water, because this is the water that Jesus was baptized in. But it wasn't. It was murky. And that's what we're baptized into, the murkiness of life. At baptism, when we're infants or adult baptisms during the RCIA, we're always baptized with clean water. And when when I was at the chapel at, at university, we would always make sure that the water, because it was running water, would always be warm water for the baptized child, because he used to immerse the whole kid in water. Um, and it was clean. But the water Jesus got baptized in was not clean. The water we renew our baptism promises in at the Jordan River is not clean. It's life. It really is a good example of the murkiness of life. How life is not always clean and perfect in crystals. And life challenges us. That's why we have Jesus, because he did it first. He came to earth and was challenged. And, and we all know what his reward for coming was. The cross. But God the Father had the last word, as we know, and resurrected him. Because God the Father is always in charge. So as we, tomorrow begins what we call ordinary time of the year. So as we begin our ordinary time, we reflect on, each of us should be saying to ourselves on some level, I am a baptized member of the body of Christ. I am a child of God. And I have full rights to speak to my Father in heaven whenever I need to. And even if I don't need to, to wake up in the morning and thank him for allowing me to experience another day, praying, excuse me, praying for myself, but hearing all the intentions that each of us has in our hearts for our ancestors who have passed and for those friends who, who need special attention now and even for peace in the world. When you pray, when we pray, we're speaking to our Father. And Jesus reminds us, Abba, Daddy, our Daddy in heaven.